haven't made a video in a while so since i was making some things i figured i'd go ahead and take this opportunity to record so today i am making ckt persia's bell bottom pants pay attention to your one inch square you want to make sure that your pattern is the right size if it is too short you need to take your time and reprint your pattern at 100 percent make sure that you cut your pattern along the stretch it's important you need it because they're knit pains you want to make sure that you have enough pull and it is true to itself so we're going to start with the waistband because i've already cut my pieces out i have two back two front mirror cut a mirror cut means you want to lay them down and cut them two on the opposites. Normally, if you take your fabric, fold it over this way, and then cut your pattern piece, you'll always get two mirrored pieces. So, starting with the waistband seam. On the short end, we're going to take it and run it through our surgeon first. And my pedal is so sensitive. I have a um a Janome 802D. I keep my blade out. That's a personal preference. And I also like to give my knit a little bit of a pull because knit has a tendency to roll. Oh, This knit fabric has a tendency to roll. I give it just a little bit of a pull, not a lot. I'm gonna clip my tails. Um, I know some people tuck theirs, I'm not gonna tuck mine because, in the end, you'll see why I skipped all of that. So, give me just a second. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot because you can see that there's a place that didn't catch, which is my fault. So I look for my presser foot. I'm going to put that piece right underneath the presser foot. Hold it with my pinky so it don't slip out. And again, giving it a little pull. Fix it. Knits are awesome. So, got our back seam already done. We're going to take this. I'm going to fold it over. Matching seams. I like to make sure my seams fold down, match up. And we're going to match it together. Give it a little shimmy. And all we're doing is lining up so we can get ready and sew the waistband together. So right there. And again... I'm lifting up my presser foot and I'm actually placing my fabric underneath the presser foot. I know some people will just put it down and let it catch, which is easier for like wovens. Knit again, likes to roll. I'm going to go around and as I go around, I'm going to take my time and make sure that my seams, my open ends, are aligned and if you have a free arm um on your embroider i mean on your son um serger this is good for like these pieces you can open the arm up see as you can see mine doesn't have that i know the brother that you can get at um Walmart has a free arm, but you have to be careful with those. They have a have been known to have timing issues. And I actually have one over there on the floor. But I love my Janome. And see right here where I have those tails, I'm just going to Surge right across it and it, it's going to seal those ends right there. Exactly 
and as I, you saw me turn it a little bit, so all they did, because I've already surged this in, I don't need to surge again. So as it goes under, I'm surging off. It's called a chain off. So here's our waistband right here. I'm going to use some clips to mark my sides in the front. So we'll need those when we get ready to sew the paint, this waistband to the actual pants. So we have our front or our back two, whichever two that you're going to start with. And these are just pieces. I actually started this video four different times. Um, I messed up, so I had to take some stitches out. So, got some threads, some loose threads. So, we're going to take our pieces. And because it continues to roll, I'm just going to hold it in place with some new clips. Normally on my serger, I got some um, hair clip, gator hair clips over there on, on my table that I normally use. But I don't have them on this side today. So we're only going to sew, see the sunlight? <laughs> the top crotch. We're only going to sew that part. thing to the other side match them quite seams up tip the tip and take my clip one at the bottom this is only to hold the pieces one out of the way because they like to roll and get them rolled up out of the way I'm gonna clip them down I'm gonna lift up my presser foot, put my fabric underneath, just be on the blade because I don't want it to cut it or to trim it. And now I'm gonna take both pieces off the chain. So this is what you should have. See? The front seam. Two pieces. So we're going to take our two pieces, right sides together as pretty side to pretty side, and we're going to match up the corners. Now this time I will use my clips, but I'm not clipping on the top just yet. I'm going to clip right here on the side because Nick likes to roll. So I'm clipping on the side. I'm going to put one clip right here just to hold it while we line up the rest of it. We're going to make sure that our front and back seams match put a clip right there to hold them in place and then we're going to do another clip on this end to hold it in place now when you do this the front of the pants will be shorter than the back of the pants. And that is for the purpose of the bill. So this is where where you should be. at your front and your back together. 
the back and front. And we're gonna sew down the side. So right now we're closing the legs of the pants. And that's the only things, places we're going to sew. So there you go, you got that. Then we're gonna go to the other side and do the exact same thing. Moving out one clip, sliding that one over. Putting it under the presser foot. starting to be so now we're gonna do our crotch now I am gonna pin this because I don't want my crotch seams moving so I'm gonna take my crotch and I want the fold different so they'll nestle easier together so we're gonna take them right there and we're gonna do one seam to the left and one seam to the right so it's kind of like a little butterfly i'm gonna put a clip there so i make sure that i keep my seams together i brought one of my clips And I got these clips from Hobby Lobby. Every other week, Hobby Lobby's fabric goes on sale. You should be mindful of that when you go in and do your shopping. Because Hobby Lobby don't always, they don't tell you that tidbit of special information, but it's important. So, we're going to do another clip on the opposite side. And remember I said it's shorter. I'm just gonna sew the cross down. Now I'm on the other side. And I'm gonna do the sewing it all the way out. Clipping my surgical tails. I'm gonna take our pants. I'm going to turn them inside out. I'm 
And again, these are a newborn size. <laughs> They're so cute. So stinking cute. Okay. And so we got our waistband. And we're going to line up our seams. And I see a hiccup. Something I'm going to fix right quick. Give me two seconds. I always check your seams. And if it's something with your seam that you don't approve of or don't necessarily look right, take the time, pick it out. It's okay to pick it out. Or if you can, like, skip stitches, just fix it. Never be afraid to admit that you did something wrong or need to fix something. And don't get discouraged because you have to pick out stitches. Everyone does it. Even when they say they don't, they do. So we're going to line up our back seam. We're going to take our pants and put them through the waistband. And then we're going to take our waistband and line it up. Back seam with back seam. Now, you may have to give your pants a little stretch because your, your waistband a little stretch because it is smaller than your pants. But we already marked our center points for the front waistband, for the front seam, and the back seam. And because we lay, overlaid it, when we were sewing this, that's going to the left and this is going to the right. Yeah. And we'll take our side seam and line up with the side seam, the side clip and line up with the side seam. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Side seam, side clip. Give it a little shake down. And this is what you should have. Where your this is the serge part of your waistband. And these are the clips that we had already put in onto the waistband. So that's the one on the back. We got our seams matched up. And we got the one on the front, which has it, it seemed less, but we put that clip there. So we knew the center. And there's our center seam. And the two clips for the sides on the side seam. And I'm gonna start on the back. I'm lifting up my presser foot, putting my fabric underneath my presser foot, making sure my pants and waistband are all meshed up, and then we're going to stir them together. I'm moving the clips as we go. Again, make sure that you keep your pants and your waistband together.
Mm, you wear that so far. Then we're gonna put our bells on to the bottom of our pants using the same form. But this doesn't have like a a front and a back seam, so it's just this way. I'm gonna take it, pull our pants leg through. And because I don't have to match up seams in particular, I'm not necessarily going to pin it down. I'm just going to clip it because it's a circle. So it don't have to be in a particular fashion. Now with these, it is best to give it a little pull, not a lot. Just make sure that they're all lined up. And you'll have to turn it because it is a circle. You don't want to get it over on itself. And I like to put my needle down sometimes when I'm manipulating the fabric just to make sure it doesn't slide from underneath the foot. Trim up my little threads. Check my seam once again because I am a avid seam checker. And again, it's okay if you have to fix something. Don't be afraid to fix it. So, so far, so good. That's what we got so far. We got one bell on. And then we're going to do the other bell. And again, we're going to take our bell and our pants right sides together. needles down while I tussle with the fabric. And I'm tussling because I didn't lift up my presser foot and put my fabric underneath. Because I want to show you that it can be done without having to clip. So now my needles are down. I'm just lining up my fabric on my bell and on my pants bottle. And 
And again, this would be easier if you have a free arm on your embroidery machine. You just take the arm off and then you would just surge it around. That little hole was coming. I saw where I did that. And there we go, finished little newborn bell bottom pants. If you have um, a cover stitch, or if you wanna take the extra time to um, finish your seams on your bell, you can. You don't have to because knit is, it doesn't unravel. So, and there we are, cute little pants. Make sure y'all like and subscribe and follow me so that you can be notified when I post new things. And eventually, if I get 100 subscribers, we go live. We'll do a, um, a giveaway, I guess. I'm going to do... Oh, I can get off here. This will be one of the next patterns I do. And I'm going to show you how I sublimate the front flap using Garbadine, Garbadine fabric. Um, this is the Mighty Messenger bag, and it has a front zipper pocket. I added a back slip pocket. And per um, Lauren's video, I did the double snap in the front. And then it has waterproof canvas lining for an additional slip pocket. So this will be our next video. Y'all stay breezy.